I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is a PayPal request for David. And he wanted my thoughts on a film called Devil's Diary from 2007, which I've never heard of. I think this is a TV movie. And I could be wrong on that, but it looks like a TV movie. In fact, that's one of the issues I have is it's low production values because of that. With that said, I didn't mind the film for what it was. I thought it was okay, an okay time waster. It was for free on YouTube. Uh, first off, if anyone's ever interested in requesting pretty much any type of video, you could do so either by requesting it directly via my PayPal or by joining my Patreon. The links are down below in the info box. If not, no worries, but if so, thank you. Now, I was a bit worried about this film because of like Devil's Diary and it's from the director of Lawnmower Man 2, Job's War, or Beyond Cyberspace, whichever one you look at, but like Lawnmower Man 2? Really? And pretty much this movie is like, which I've never read, I never saw the movie afterward, Death Note, the manga, which... I don't I think Death Note was before this manga wise I know the Death Note movie came out many years after but there was a manga I want to say 2005 2004 maybe 2006 so part of me wonders if someone read that and then kind of stole the idea for this I don't know because the plot of the film yeah these two women the, there are two women that kind of get bullied at school from these cheerleaders and their butt boy boyfriends. And these two, these two women are in a cemetery, lightning strikes, and on this tombstone, I'm like, is Jason Voorhees going to come back and rip out Horshaft's heart? No. Instead, a book appears. And I will say that Again, the fact this was made for TV, it does look like production-wise something you would see on an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer or any of, number of those type of TV shows. I mean, when the lightning hits the tombstone, it's really funky effects. Same thing later on where there's some flames and a little bit of explosion slash flames and there's really shitty effects. I do think this film would have worked out better if A, it did have a bigger budget, like a movie budget, and B, if it was rated R. Because at times, this seems as if it's trying to be Final Destination meets the plot of Death Note. Or I guess Death Note by itself could be Final Destination type of kills, but... 
I didn't. That's the big flaws, the TV stuff. But I thought the acting wasn't too bad. I thought the two girls who play the characters of Ursula and Dominique, they were not bad. Later on, you see Brian Krause. For those who don't know, he was the lead in Stephen King's Sleepwalkers. Now, Sleepwalkers is not that great of a movie, but I thought Brian Krause was fine in his role. It was cool to see him here. He plays a good priest who's trying to help out our main character. Well, we'll become our main character. Because it does this thing where at first our main character is Ursula. And like Death Note, if you write in this diary and you wish someone ill, that's what's going to happen. Now, the plot of Death Note is if you write a name, that person will die. Here, you have to be more specific where here's this person and she says, I wish she got her legs broken, this bitchy cheerleader. And then she does. Ursula writes more. I wish her boyfriend, blah, blah, blah. And then during class, he falls and gets his face burned. Now, again, the plot I don't mind, the story I don't mind, the acting I don't mind. That's why I can watch this as a time waster. But the, the production of the TV, the, the directing, I mean, it's the director of Lawnmower Man too, so... Maybe a better director would sufficed. But there's times where when the girls lay the cheerleaders lays get broken. It's TV, so you don't get to see a lot of visceralness. And you get some zoom ins and when the guy's face get burned. It does a stupid camera technique as if the camera's spazzing out. As if the camera is going through fucking detox by itself. And I'm guessing the reason they did that is, well, we don't want to show his face burned. We don't want to show the other effects that could happen. Because this is made for TV. We, we can't be too graphic. And, you know, this is 2007, yeah, I remember. Not nowadays. And so just have the camera spaz out and f I don't know how the hell to describe it. That's really the, the word to use. Spaz out. The camera's having a fucking spasm attack. Do that so you don't see the guy's burnt face and other stuff. And the more this girl earths her rice, the more she gets pale. Now, writing-wise, I did think it was a bit weird that these cheerleaders... The cheerleaders were really quick to believe Hocus Pocus. I mean, the idea, well, someone wrote this, and because someone wrote this, that's true. I, yeah, I thought that was a bit... I thought that was weird that they jumped to that conclusion so quickly and believed it. I would have thought the conclusion would be, Oh my God, who did she pay to do this? She said she was going to do this. Who did she pay to do this? She did something, right? She she must have made him trip. Who did it? Did you do it? Who was up for, like, did someone, yeah, someone did that. They made him slip and they made him do this. Who hired them to hit me with a car? Did they pay him off? I, I would think that'd be the conclusion to go to, not, oh my God, this book is supernatural. This diary. So, I'm sure there's a cheerleader joke in there. Are they blonde? Well, the main bitchy cheerleader is blonde, so I guess there is a joke to be had with that. It always reminds me, don't be offended if you're blonde. This is just a joke by Joe Bob Briggs. Where he said that someone at the police station kept getting calls. And the one call they got is... Oh, I went into my car and they, they took everything. They, they took the stereo. They, they took all the money. They, they, they took my, even my dashboard. Five minutes later, they call police station again. They go, oh my God, I realized they even took the, the 
accelerator, they took the brake. Oh my god, they, they took even more than I thought. Five minutes later, it goes back. Oh my god, they even took the, the steering wheel. They took everything. Ten minutes later, call back. Oops, I got in the back seat by mistake. But this is a movie where, again, the acting is fine, the idea is fine, has a little bit of ambition with the story that grabbed me because it stole it from another thing, but hampered by his TV production budget and uh, a director that is honestly not known for much of movies worth a shit. Lawnmower Man 2 sucks. Lawnmower Man 2 is awful. Fucking terrible fucking sequel to a pretty decent movie. I mean, the budget is so fucking cheap and the rating for TV movie is so low, some guy gets on fire, but it's off fucking screen. It's just the body's wheeled out and they go, oh, he caught on fire. Wow, that would've been something nice to fucking see, but we don't see it. People, are you sure you don't mind the movie? I don't mind the movie, but I'm getting some of the flaws out of the way. Like, Ursula, she writes and she's becoming more pale. I thought it was a bit weird that you would think the people she would go after first are the bitchy cheerleaders that she keeps arguing with. Instead, she writes nets of this guy who she's barely had inter any interaction. I want him to lose his eyes. I'm like, what the fuck did he do? I mean, he was with the the other girl, Georgia, I think is her name. She pissed you off. Why wouldn't you immediately write about her? Not this guy, but because there wouldn't be a movie, which is lousy writing. See, so yeah, I mean, the more I think about it, there, there's a lot of cracks in here. But I thought the two leads did well. I thought the fact that half of the film is one lead and then it jumps to the other lead. Another girl being the lead and I thought it actually worked out because the second girl I thought was even better. Like the girl who played Ursula was fine but I thought the girl, her friend who plays Dominique was better. And I thought how these cheerleaders, they steal the book and then they start getting revenge and start using it for their own satisfaction. Brad and me is like, wow, they're really that quick to killing. And then I'm going, well, it's high school. Yes, they are. <laughs> I mean, that's not really unrealistic. Have you ever been to school? Have you ever been to high school? Then yeah, you know it's realistic. <laughs> Sad to say. And when it's characters trying to get this book back and then the others using it to either get their own satisfaction or like one of the cheerleaders writes and then all the kids flock to her. Now, Greta, I thought it was only pertaining to how people die because someone, one of the girls earlier said, hey, write that I have big boobs. And that never happened. But apparently this other girl can write, well... I want all the guys to fall in love with me and they, they do. So I'm like, wait a minute. I thought that only pertained to stuff that leads to death. If that worked, why didn't the bigger boobs thing work? Okay. Again, the more I think about the year, the, the writing is pretty iffy at times. So yeah, the, the rating for this kind of goes down a little the more I talk about this. But have I seen worse? Yes. Are there a lot of issues? Yes. The poor production values. There's a point where a spotlight falls on a girl, on a high school girl, and in the way it's shot is fairly shoddy. But I, don't, I guess I was just, being a guy who does not know a lot about Death Note, I've heard about it, but I've not see, read the manga. If there's an anime, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen the movie, although I've heard only bad things about it. 
I was interested in the story and I liked the two leads. It was cool to see the, oh, the guy from Sleepwalkers. I remember that. I thought he did fine for the bit role he had. I thought it was a bit weird where the movie went, where it seems like the movie's going to go into this big showdown with Lee character and the evil, one of the evil cheerleaders. And then it kind of took a turn where it almost became a different movie. So, spoiler alert, spoilers. To see the evil cheerleader who's doing stuff, she gets taken out. And then the sexual predator stepdad goes after Dominique and she has to write in the book and then the guy stabs himself, but you don't see much because it's a TV movie. And then it goes to Brian, uh, was it Brian Krause, I said? Did I get his name right? Was I messing it up? I think that's his name. And this other priest, the terrorist name's like Sanchez or something. And all of a sudden, Sanchez, that priest gets the book. And then he's ambitious about it. And then he wants to do all the stuff. And then just by touching the book, if you know what you want, you don't even need to write in it. And then he's able to do stuff. I'm like, where is this movie going now? Like, just out of the blue, now it's this evil priest. And then you have the good priest, and then you have your Dominique. But then she stabs the fucking book. Some shitty effects. Brian Carl, Sally, his character dies. I did say spoilers. And then she's in a psych ward. And then she warns, like she still has a feeling on the book. And she can feel that someone else has the book. She's like, it's out there. She doesn't say that, but I'm like, is it trying to lead into a sequel? Will they try to make a series of films with this? Yeah, the more I think about it, the more I dislike it. So, I mean, this isn't a full-on rant. But yeah, the, sometimes that's how it, it goes. You have to talk it out. And then when you hear it, it's like, yeah, this film is kind of lousy. <laughs> it's a fairly lousy TV movie, but... I like the idea behind it. I like the two lead teenagers in it. Cool to see the guy from Sleepwalkers in another film. Because I don't think he was the problem with Stephen Teen Sleepwalkers. I have other issues with that. Which, I mean, in retrospect, that's not the worst movie ever. Sleepwalkers, to be honest. But hey, it was cool to see Brian Krause again. But yeah, just... It needed a few more rewrites in the script. It needed a different director, a more competent director, and it needed to not be a TV movie. It needed to have a decent sized budget or even the budget than say a Final Destination movie had. And R-rated, whether it be gore or whether it be just not cutting away and not being so tame. So, the more I think about it, this was a concept that I could see being remade into a better movie. But if it did, it'd just be a rip off of Death Note. And again, I don't know if Death Note is a good or a bad movie. I've only heard bad things. If you've seen it, how is it? But hey, if you want to see a TV movie with hints of death note and a teeny hint of final destination a teeny hint and that's just i say final destination only for the well this thing and this thing happens and then they die or whatever by accidents it's not really a big recommendation because it's not a great movie the more i think about it it's I watched it. It didn't get mad. The more I think about it, the more stuff doesn't make sense. Or like, well, wait, they did this to that. But it is what it is. It is what it is. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's a great recommendation, huh? Not really. I mean, you don't. If anything sounds interesting, sure, you'll see worse movies. But it's nothing I would ever see again. I've seen much worse. I've seen much better. 
It was a movie. It was a TV movie, and that's that. Later.